Chairman, members of the committee, uh, for the record, my name is Mike Wimsat, I serve as Director of the Waste Management Division for the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services, and I'm joined by our Assistant Commissioner Mark Sanborn this morning. <coughs> so thank you for the opportunity to testify on House Bill 56 as amended. Um, we have several concerns about the bill um, that I'll briefly uh, summarize. Uh, and I would note that we do see, as others have suggested, Senate Bill 61 as amended, um, which I believe is, is headed to the House. Um, we see that as a more effective way of addressing landfill siting concerns. But to, to move to our concerns about House Bill 56, uh, with regard to the five-year travel time distance that it requires uh, the site-specific uh, determination of that, we're um, un unsure, first of all, how that has been determined to be the appropriate standard. Um, and we are concerned about potential impacts on the future availability of landfill sites in New Hampshire, given the way that it's determined to be uh, 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 identified. And uh, that goes to the second concern, which is that what, it, what the bill currently requires is that if you take the highest, uh, if you do a number of tests on the site, you take the highest groundwater seepage velocity that you can detect at the site, and you basically assume that the whole site and everything going to the surface water from there meets those, is, 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 has that same uh, hydraulic conductivity or, or seepage velocity. And we believe that that will very likely result in erroneously high estimates of overall site-wide uh, seepage velocity and uh, would not be reflective of the site at large. So, so we believe that that would be uh, uh, problematic. Uh, thirdly, um, it also, the amended bill now identifies that no landfill can be sited over a um, significant sand and gravel aquifer. But that term, significant sand and gravel aquifer, is not defined, and we believe that would be a problem on implementation um, because there would need to be a definition for that. Um, fourthly, uh, th there's the, the bill provides that certain project improvement allowances um, could be uh, identified that would effectively reduce that five-year travel time requirement. Um, but, it, but the bill doesn't specify what those particular uh, project improvement allowances might be. And you, you think that the agency, in order to implement something like that, would need a little more direction. Um, and then uh, with respect to those project improvement allowances, um, it prohibits uh, them being used for any site where any single measurement of hydraulic conductivity um, in the aquifer um, or in the soils at the site is greater than or equal to one times 10 to the minus fifth centimeters per second. And that is uh, uh, projects concerns similar to what I mentioned before about if you just take one test, it isn't necessarily going to be reflective of the site. It ignores the variability that almost all sites have in terms of soil quality and soil layers. And it also um, probably would be, might well end up being unnecessarily restrictive. So those summarize our concerns, and I want to turn it over to Mark Sanborn for a few more remarks. Yes, hi. Afternoon, everyone. Or morning, everyone. Uh, the director did a great job outlining, you know, come to the specific technical out, outline on a more policy overview perspective. Um, after last session, we were asked this session to be very clear about when it comes to the landfill bills, you know, where we are. So the bill that we DES supports is SB 61 as currently amended. All of the other bills on this subject, DES would um, oppose um, if asked on opinion. Um, and the reason we, we support the approach of SB 61 is there is nothing prescribed in there. Um, it gives a clean rulemaking process um, it um, provides funding to do a study. Um, we have a very talented staff. The problem with on this subject, to do, they'd have to stop doing a whole bunch of work they're doing right now to be able to concentrate on doing the research and, and um, uh, gather the information needed. So that is why we propose to do an outside consultant to come in and be able to do that work in a much shorter amount of time. Um, we have committed to the public that we would take their input on the, for the RFP and the items that should be included in what the study looks at. Um, and during the rulemaking process, we wouldn't be approving any um, new applications. So the bottom line is we, we, we don't feel we and our folks right now have enough information to set any specific standards. 
And so we're concerned about any bill that does that. We'd rather start with a fresh slate, let us do the research and information and gather the information we need so we can do a rulemaking process, which has a public component to it, as you all know, and folks would be able to make their voices heard. Um, but let us start in a place where we can just be completely data-driven, science-based, um, without anything prescribed um, as we go about our work. Um, so that is what we have, the, and the uh, director did a great job giving examples on this bill, why some of the specifics we'd have concerns about it and, as opposed to starting with a fresh mandate of gather the data, gather the science, and do a rulemaking that makes sense for New Hampshire. So with that, we're happy to take any questions. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate your testimony. Questions from the committee? Senator also. Yes. Um, thank you. I, I think I'm a little confused about the juxtaposition of Senate Bill 61 to House Bill 56, because I'm reading, and we were all here for the hearings for 61, so I think we're all on the same page there, and it is the position of the Senate. Um, it seems like this bill actually complements Senate Bill 61 um, as it offers some opportunities to, to use exactly what we have outlined in 61 uh, to come up with these rules and parameters. So, you know, hiring an independent hydrologist um, actually fits into the uh, the statement of purpose, which are very very similar, um, is it just that you know these? Where do you think they fight each other? Because I see them as as being a dovetail, and I I'm not I'm confused about why you feel like they're acrimonious. Sure, thank you for the question, Senator. So they they are the same in the sense that they both direct DES to to do rulemaking to address the issue of landfill siting and setbacks specifically setbacks from uh, surface waters uh, but they but but what really sets 56 apart in that regard is that it 61 tells us to do the work get some very significant and what we think will be important input from an independent contractor who will review our siting regulations um, but but 56 then tells us what to do. It tells us make rules that, that establish um, a five-year setback. And 61 doesn't say that. Um, 61 says to take a more uh, measured approach to it, try to determine what those setbacks ought to be, how they ought to be determined using site-specific data. Um, and, and candidly, 61 doesn't contain what we see as flaws in 56, which ask us to consider what we think is um, data that we would never consider in any of the work that we're doing. We would never take one measurement at a site and say the whole site is reflected by that measurement. We always take try to get as much data as we can at a site to make a determination about how the site behaves hydrogeologically. So that is, those are really fundamental flaws that we see in the bill. And I'll just add, I mean, at this point, the amount of bills and the amount of different folks who have come forward with their, what they believe is the right approach to that. We're, we're dubious about starting anywhere other than um, let our folks work with professional contractors to come up with data and a scientific approach that doesn't start from an assumed position or assumed approach. Um, there will be a public process during the rulemaking that allow folks to come in and and, and voice any concerns or any disagreements they have. Um, and, uh, you know, the bottom line is we're, we were happy to see a bill come forward that allows DES to start the rulemaking process without any assumptions built into it in, in terms of how we were approaching it. And that's why that's the approach, that's the approach we'll, we'll be able to voice support for. Any of the others that predetermines an approach for us in our rulemaking um, we're not going to be able to support. Thank you very much for your testimony, gentlemen. We appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Tim White, 